In this video, I'll explain about the cushion on Elizabeth's chair. Uh, now, this is not very complicated, but it's important to do. Uh, this cushion inflates, and over the course of a week's time, it will have deflated some. And so it's important to one time per week, overnight, when Elizabeth is not in the wheelchair, so when she's not there, and you notice I have the seat belt clasp up here like I mentioned before, you take this valve right here and turn it counterclockwise. And when you do, you'll hear a hissing sound, and it would be natural to assume that that's air coming out of the, the cushion, but it's actually air coming into the cushion and inflating and so to make sure that that's done one time per week to inflate when Elizabeth is not in the chair overnight. Okay, so imagine then it's the next morning after the chair has sat overnight, the cushion has had a chance to rebound, the valve has been open, and so I want to close the valve, close the valve, and then Elizabeth will be put into the chair and Of course, the seat belt always secured. Okay. And at that point then, open the valve back up counterclockwise, counterclockwise, and you'll hear a hissing sound. And when your hissing is stopped, then close the valve back and then that's allowed the cushion to adjust to the contours of Elizabeth's body. This segment will focus on the use and care of the wheelchair cushion. Elizabeth spends the majority of her waking time sitting in the wheelchair, so it needs to be comfortable for her and also provide some health benefits for her. You've already seen videos about the joystick and the control box with the high-tech functions they have for positioning of the chair. These positions are really important to provide pressure relief for Elizabeth throughout the day. The cushion, while it is not high-tech, does provide some important functions along these lines too. And it's important that we want to maintain the integrity of the cushion by using and caring for it properly. In the event that the cushion should get wet, these will be the steps to follow to launder it. First thing will be, once Elizabeth's out of the chair, to unzip in the back the cover and then carefully remove the cover. And you need to pay special attention to the valve down there, and it, the little hole will slip over it, but you want to be careful about it. And I'm there now. So I'm going to carefully lift it out over. You'll get, want to get hung up. Okay. All right, I want to point out something about the cushion cover while I've got it out. Notice the back side has a Velcro to attach to the platform of the chair. The front side is a um, washable surface or a cleanable surface, I should say. And the inside of it, of the top part, has a mesh uh, fabric on it. It's important that this mesh, mesh fabric stay unwrinkled like it is now because if wrinkles develop in it over time, they too can cause pressure sores which lead to skin breakdown. So if you ever see that wrinkles are developing, of course, try to smooth them out. If they get to the point they can't be smoothed, then please let me know as soon as possible and we'll work on getting a new cushion cover. All right, so the cushion cover is off. It's wet. I recommend if you're at the day program, just folding it up and inside Elizabeth's book bag, hopefully there will be a big enough bag, plastic bag, put it in to send back to the apartment. 
And of course, you need to alert the uh, house manager at the apartment that this is coming back and needs to be laundered. And then you hang it somewhere on the back of Elizabeth's chair. All right, in the meantime, this cushion should be slightly clean. Recommend using a real gentle cleanser. This is one that could be used. We'll have some of this at the apartment and probably at the day program too. You just gently spray a little bit on and then wipe it dry or wipe it with a uh, paper towel. Then I would put it aside to let it air dry. In the meantime, for Elizabeth to sit, we do provide old cushions from former chairs. And there will be one at the day program and one under Elizabeth's bed at the apartment. They're not perfect fits, but they work well enough. And you can place that on the chair and Elizabeth can use that. And of course, you'll send the cushion home along with the cushion cover alerting the daycare, I mean, the alerting the house manager. All right, laundering the cushion cover. It's a good idea to turn the cover inside out before laundering. And again, making sure that the mesh area is wrinkle free. Using a very gentle laundry detergent and just a little bit of it, you'll launder this separately from anything else. Uh, place it in the wash along with the washer, along with the detergent. Use a gentle cycle only and cold water only. You may also need to do an extra rinse. All right, once the item is, um, the washer has finished, check to make sure the soap seems to be off. If not, then do another rinse with cold water. You take, um, the cushion, smooth again to make sure there are no wrinkles, and then you will air dry the cushion. I suggest using you know, a pants hanger and just clipping it to the cushion and then hanging it maybe in the, the tub area to dry, to air dry. You should never put the cushion cover in the dryer. It will shrink, it will cause it to tear, a lot of problems. So air dry only. The cushion cover is now dry. It is air dry. I've checked for no wrinkles again in the mesh area and I'm ready to put the cover back on the cushion. I've turned it right side out again. All right, the tricky part about this is just making sure you're putting the cushion in correctly because it is easy to get turned around and put it in incorrectly where it won't be providing the good functions. Um, for Elizabeth. So, notice again the labels. Remember that the back end, the back side, will be on the zipper side. So, where it's labeled front with the arrow, that's a good clue that that's the part you put in first. And you start sliding it in. Again, we're going to be careful of the valve as it approaches. I found that if you, before you pull everything taut, just kind of get it slightly up there, that you go ahead and place the valve, peek it through the hole, and then you can carefully readjust. And right now, things are pretty easy to do. As it gets washed some, it may get a little bit tight. When you zip, just be real careful that you don't zip the cushion because it can puncture it. The cushion is self-inflatable and we you know, don't want to put any holes or tears in it. So I'm kind of going slowly over the corner. And now it's back on. I can feel the back depression and I see the valve so I know it's in correctly. All right, the cushion has been washed, the cover has been washed and dry, air dried, and we're ready to place it back on the chair. And you just have to 
double check and make sure the edges line up, the edge of the cushion with the front edge of the chair. It's on basically straight. All right, one more step. To keep the cushion cover from needing to be washed so often, we can use a protective under pad on the chair and that generally helps because a lot of times it will absorb any moisture and you don't even need to wash the cushion cover. Um, these particular ones are green, sometimes they're backed by blue, but the colored part is the back of it. The absorbent part is going to be white. I like to fold it like this, almost in thirds, but not quite. Gives it a nice, neat appearance on the chair as well as um, just, yeah, you know, it's not hanging off and not having wrinkles. But kind of slide some of it back enough to tuck under the back of the chair. And then you lift the chair up a little bit and just cut the front, and then just kind of cut the back under a little, you know, you really need to see that. Just tuck it under so it's not flopping out, and then kind of smooth it, again, to avoid wrinkles, and then it's ready for Elizabeth to be placed back in the chair.